The Christmas spirit was clothed in one simple deep green robe or mantle, bordered with white fur. This garment hung so loosely on the figure that its capacious breast was bare, as if disdaining to be warded or concealed by any artifice. Its feet were bare, and on its head it wore no other covering than a holly wreath. Its dark brown curls were long and free, free as its genial face, its sparkling eye, its open hand, its cheery voice, and its joyful air. The people who were shoveling away on the housetops were jovial and full of glee, calling out to one another from the parapets and now and then exchanging a facetious snowball. The poulterers' shops were still half open, and the fruit shops were radiant in their glory. There were great round pot-bellied baskets of chestnuts, shaped like the waistcoats of jolly old gentlemen. There were ruddy brown-faced Spanish onions, shining in the fatness of their growth, like Spanish friars. There were pears and apples, there were bunches of grapes, there were piles of filberts, mossy and brown, recalling in their fragrance ancient walks among the woods. The grocer and his people were so frank and fresh that the polished hearts with which they fastened their aprons behind might have been their own, worn outside for general inspection. Meanwhile, the fog and darkness thickened. The ancient tower of a church, whose gruff old bell was always peeping slyly down at Scrooge out of a gothic window in the wall, became invisible and struck the hours and quarters in the clouds with tremulous vibrations afterwards, as if its teeth were chattering in its frozen head up there. The brightness of the shops, where holly sprigs and berries crackled in the lamp heat of the windows, made pale faces ruddy as they passed. Poulterers and grocers' trades became a splendid joke, a glorious pageant with which it was next to impossible to believe that such dull principles as bargain and sale had anything to do.